So, welcome to day one. This is going to be training. It's going to be not live, maybe live in the future. And we're going to be talking about things that I listen to, say, Tom Ferry or a bunch of other top agents. And then we're going to have a little uh, bullet point. Today we have seven. And, we, and Mr. Bottomley is our audience in the back. So you might hear some clapping. There might be some fruit thrown. But uh, so I'm going to go over things that I hear every single week and then I just bring up. So number one is every day is day one. I've heard this multiple times. In other words, they wake up and they say that there's no business. You know, there's a guy out in California, Tim Smith, and he says it brings that hunger. He wakes up and he goes, where's my business? And then he goes on a CRM and he understands where he needs to go, but he wakes up every single day and he says it's day one, even though he's the top Coldwell banker out in Southern California. He does like $800 million worth of business, but he wakes up every single day. It's day one. I have nothing. And that's essentially to, to build the hunger. The first dial in conversation, this is actually from my coach last week, which essentially said the first dial, it's not a conversation. I'm sorry. It's not a call and it's not prospecting. It's a dial and it's not prospecting. It's a conversation. The first dial and conversation is to earn a second conversation. We went to that appointment yesterday. I think we had earned a second conversation because we were charismatic and she liked us and she hasn't had the best experience with brokers in the past, but we went in there not asking for the business, not understanding that she's had a terrible experience. And she obviously told us about that terrible experience of just come here, do what we agreed to do. Don't ask for the business, but I think we've earned a second conversation and that's the mindset of going in, especially in this environment. No one's just going to be like list with me because the mar market's not hot enough that you have to put it on today. It's a conversation. What's the pricing? What's the marketing? What's the schedule? Third point, we have to call with purpose and value. This is the February, this is the February, um, say theme which is we call with purpose and value. We're not calling to follow up. We're not calling to say, I'm calling. This is the way you say it. I'm calling you because, and then you insert it. I was in the area. We've seen an uptick in sales. It's been six months. Your home hasn't been on the market. Why is it not on the market? What has changed? So there's a reason and you actually state the reason. So that is probably one of the biggest themes that we'll have, which is you call with value, you call with purpose. The purpose of this call, the purpose of this text, the purpose of this email is, and you state it up front. And we talked about last week about how to actually leave voicemails. This is name, company, reason I'm calling, and I'll call you back. And you essentially, I forgot where I actually got this. I think I actually got this from Tom Ferry. Is you set appointments on the voice note, the voicemail. So you say, I'm going to call back on Monday at 9 a.m., and you actually just continuously set appointments. This actually was Phil Jones. Phil Jones, he wrote a, a great book that I haven't read yet, but he's a great speaker and great with words. He's an orator, master orator. There will be a time that we just don't feel like it, especially now. You kind of feel this, this collective consciousness of down. You know, a lot of people are down, negative, you know, all over, say the media, say politics, say... Uh, the market, say the buyers, say the rates, say the stock market, everything is going to be in chaos. And the thing is blinders. Obviously we talked about it last week, a couple of times, but the time that you feel worst is the time that we have to be most committed. And the reason being is that when the time feels the worst is when no one's committed. So more committed to the protocol of the minimums. So we have minimums every single day. We have minimums every single week. We have minimums more committed, the worse we feel. So I wake up, I'm tired this morning. I didn't want to go on the treadmill. I didn't want to go for a run. It felt really good. But to be honest, it could have been easy to just skip it. <laughs> it could have been very easy to skip it. But I'm tired, more committed to the protocol. This is something I actually got from David Goggins. The next two I actually got from David Goggins, which is you got to choose your heart. We don't know what the heart is. The heart could be a bad deal. It could be an uncomfortable conversation. It could be that you messed up in a deal. It could be a very low offer. We discussed that yesterday with an owner. She received a very low offer. You got to choose the hard. The hard is I'm lazy and I'm not going to get business in the future. So it's going to be hard in the future. Or you choose the hard up front and then it's going to be easy in the future. So the hard up front is 
I'm going to wake up and I'm going to get on the treadmill. That's hard and it stinks. Or I could have said, that's easy and then the hard is in the future. So I chose the hard in the presence. So the hard is going to be calls, prospecting, appointments, asking for the business, following up, making the calls you don't want to make, following up when you don't want to make it. And to, to piggyback on that, the last two points, is Goggins, obviously mental toughness champion of the century, even though it's only about 23 years old, the century. But he says, mental toughness is a perishable skill. Habits are a perishable skill. In other words, if you don't do something, you lose the habit. If you don't do something, your mental toughness goes away. It's not something you have. It's not riding a bike. It's every single day, you get a little bit better at rewiring the brain for your mental habit, your mental toughness, and any habit, to be honest. You know, when I was training for triathlons in 2019, essentially, it was easy to wake up because my why was so focused. I ate healthy, I woke up, we made crazy amounts of phone calls to expireds, and then COVID hits and big excuses came into my life. But it's like, choose your heart. I chose my heart, which was have a hard three years. Uh, my mental toughness went away. My habits went away. It's a perishable skill. You, you, it's anything. You know, if, if you don't do a lot of YouTube videos, if you don't do a lot of social media videos, if you don't do public speaking, if you don't do calls, it doesn't matter. If, if you don't ask for business, you got to choose the hard and also it's a perishable skill. And this is more on essentially social media and a theme that I've been hearing throughout social media from a lot of the top people that do social media, which is you have to take a stand on who you are. You have to take a stand on your morals, your ethics, and your values. People are not going to be okay with that. It doesn't matter. If you just post about being a mother, if you just post about being a single father, if you just post about me, a triathlete who likes to read, this is my past one who I'm rebirthing, triathlete who likes to read, and that's about it. I don't go out, I don't go to concerts, I don't travel, I do business, triathlons, and I read. That's it. And I pray. Those are the morals, the ethics, and the values. And that has to be front and center. And the reason being is that people want to know who they're working with. If, if it's just like every other profile on social media, they don't know who you are. They don't know what you stand for. And to be honest, you're going to have as, I forgot what his name, who wrote Raving Fans, or someone else who wrote 1,000 Raving Fans, is that if you have 1,000 Raving Fans, which is a lot, you could build an entire career over it. If you go niche, it's great. If you go Tony Robbins, which is big, it's great. But you're not as invested because he kind of has everything. Health, wellness, business, money, mindset, motivation. He's, he's got the whole gamut. So people like go to it and then he doesn't have, he has some raving fans. But if you go niche, which I want to do this year, people, and this is the last thing I'll say on it, which I wrote, people are starving for authenticity. So you're essentially being more authentic to who you are instead of this is who everyone else is and I'm just fitting in to be like everyone else. And then you're like everyone else. But if you put out a good lifestyle, which is what we're about, a good lifestyle, healthy, healthy lifestyle with morals, ethics, and values, you're going to push away the people that may not have that. And that's good because you kind of don't want to work with the people that don't align with, align with who you are because they might take more energy out of you. And there might not be alignment when you're working together. You're going to be, especially in New York City, in a three-month relationship once they actually sign a contract. Once you're working with them, it takes four months. Hi, I'm working with you. It's going to be up to four months of a relationship. You want to enjoy that relationship. So that's the first session of the training. Uh, personally, I think it was very good. <laughs> if I have to say so myself, Eric's in the background. He fell asleep. Um, I hear him snoring, which is fantastic. But if you guys have any questions, uh, send it in below. And obviously, uh, every single Tuesday, we're going to be coming back here, sending it. It could be even live. Um, but that's for the first session. Talk